Most everyone understands that if there is a person or a book that can accurately predict the future, then that's superhuman. It just is something that no human by their own design or by their own skill can do. In fact, as we look into the Bible, we see that statement put forth to us. God Himself said, Let them bring forth and show us what will happen, or declare to us things to come. Show the things that are to come hereafter, that we may know you are God's. For years, in ancient cultures, people understood that if a person, if a prophet, if a book accurately predicts things that happen in detail in the future and is never wrong about any of those, then that person, prophet, book has to have some type of divine origin. When we look into the Bible, we see that it's filled with prophecy. One of those very powerful prophecies that is evidence for the divine inspiration is the prophecy of Ezekiel found in chapter 26 concerning the city of Tyre. You see, Tyre was a city that came to prominence in about 1200 B.C. It was one of the best natural ports on the Mediterranean Sea. It stood at the crossroads of worldwide trading. But the problem with Tyre was that it had become very wicked. During Ezekiel's day, he wrote that by the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of splendor. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities. You find that in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 16 through 18. So Ezekiel says, because of the evil and wickedness that is within your walls, God is going to destroy you. And in Ezekiel chapter 26, he lists several things that were going to happen to the city of Tyre. He said that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, would destroy the mainland villages. He said that Nebuchadnezzar would build a siege mound against the city. Ezekiel prophesied that many nations would come up against Tyre, that the city would be flattened like the top of a rock, and that its stones and its timber and soil would be laid in the sea, and it would become a place where men spread nets, and the city of Tyre would never be rebuilt. After Ezekiel's prophecy, Nebuchadnezzar did indeed besiege the city. In fact, it was a long siege of about 14 years. And in that time, the Tyrians, the inhabitants of Tyre, began to take all of their materials and move them out to an island about three-fourths of a mile off of the mainland. Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar eventually breached the city and he got in to find that the Tyrians had all moved out. Yes, he did destroy the mainland villages and he encamped around the city, built a siege mound against it. After Nebuchadnezzar did that, there were several scores and decades of years that other nations came up against the city of Tyre until about 330 B.C. In 330 B.C., a man by the name of Alexander the Great was sweeping across the globe, conquering everything in his path. In fact, it's said that at one point in his life, he knelt and cried because there was no more world left to conquer. Alexander the Great came up against the mainland city of Tyre, as Ezekiel had predicted about those other nations. And he basically did the exact same thing that Nebuchadnezzar had done hundreds of years earlier, except... After his siege, which wasn't nearly as long, only about nine months, when he got into the mainland city, those Tyrians had moved to the island city. Now, Alexander the Great was not easily thwarted, and he did not do what Nebuchadnezzar did. Nebuchadnezzar basically said, oh, well, and he left. Alexander the Great said, no, no one makes a fool of me. And so he started to devise plans as to how to get to the island city of Tyre. And how did he do that? Well, here's what he did. He decided he was going to take every single stone, 
piece of wood and all the dirt from the mainland city of Tyre and was going to dump it into the Mediterranean Sea and build a land bridge out to the island city of Tyre. And that's exactly what he did. Took every bit of building material, scraped Tyre clean like a rock, and dumped it into the Mediterranean Sea. The prophecy that Ezekiel had uttered several hundred years before Alexander the Great ever stepped onto the scene came true when all of that building material was thrown down into the Mediterranean Sea. In fact, when Ezekiel said that the city would never again be rebuilt, oh, there's a city now that's in the relative same place as Tyre once was. It's also named Tyre. But the interesting thing about that, when that soil and timber and those stones were poured into the Mediterranean Sea, it caused the sand to build up there around the mainland. And the area where the original city once was, well, we don't even know where that is today exactly. The city can never be rebuilt because we can't even locate the exact point there on the edge of the mainland where the city once was. Ezekiel looked several hundred years into the future and talked about Tyre being scraped clean like a rock. In all of the annals of human history, how many cities have been scraped clean like that? Very, very few. And yet Ezekiel predicted it perfectly. How? Tell them to show us what will come in the future, what will be hereafter, and we will believe that they are gods. You see, that was the challenge God gave to the idols, but they couldn't. But God took up the challenge Himself, and through the prophet Ezekiel, He told the world exactly what would happen to Tyre, and it came to pass. What can we uncover and discover from this truth? That the Bible is the product of God.